Welcome, ladies and gents, to IEEE Northern Australia's first backyard invention series. So I'm Mel Olson, as most of you guys know, and this evening, long-standing IEEE engineer Graham Woods will be presenting Dunny Dramas and the 12 volt pump. So, so please keep your microphones on mute and I'll facilitate questions at the end or use the little chat icon. So if you see a, there's a chat box down the bottom, you can type questions in there if you like, just to make it a little bit more manageable for Graham. So I think we'll get started with further ado. Um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Graham Woods presenting Dunny Dramas and the 12 volt pump. Oh, yeah, thanks very much, Mel. Um, yeah, it's good to do the, the first talk um, for this uh, home inventions uh, series. Um, yeah, uh, great initiative and, and um, yeah, privilege to, to kick it off. Um, a fairly short, non-technical type uh, presentation tonight, so don't get too worried, it won't take too much of your time. Um, and promise that there's no equations, well, no hard ones. Um, so I, I guess with all that's happening in the world at the moment and um, interest in, in toilets and all toilet projects uh, or, or accessories, I thought that um, uh, Dunny Dramas was, was a good title and, and maybe would uh, get a few people interested in, in what I was going to talk to talk about. The actual topic but it is more around the, the 12 volt solar pump, but obviously that's a little bit less um, dramatic, I guess. Um, so I, I'll jump straight in. I, I haven't got a, any sort of um, strict agenda or, or format that I want to do for the talk. I've just put a whole heap of photos in and, and talk about um, what I've, I've done. Um, so basically the problem, um, I live on a, an acre block and um, our, we don't have sewage system. Uh, so we rely on, on the, the quite old, I guess now, septic system. Um, so you have your septic tank and there's a um, uh, absorption drain that goes out from the septic tank. And uh, right at the end here is, is my solar pump. I've got a little bit better uh, photo of that um, later on. The, the sort of soil where our house is, and I guess this goes for much of the, the Townsville um, um, land, uh, is, is very clay. Uh, and during uh, wet weather in particular, um, we don't get very good absorption through the absorption trench. Um, obviously that can cause problems if we, if we don't um, manage to absorb off uh, the water that is um, sort of coming out of the septic then everything starts to back up and you end up with a slow draining toilet. Um, I tried a, a few things initially when we first um, bought the house or, or built the house to, to try and get around this problem. Uh, we tried planting some trees up the back around um, the end here where uh, you get most of the, the puddling, um, but plants don't like um, sort of getting their feet wet too often. And so um, a lot of those die. So, in the end, um, what I, I went to was uh, a 12 volt um, pump. And um, initially, that I, I just used a, a 12 volt uh, boat pump and I, I, I slid it into the, the, the uh, I guess, the pipe at the end of this um, absorption trench. And uh, initially, I was um, just running that off a, a battery charger when I needed to. Um, but that wasn't very convenient. I, I was sort of continually plugging this thing in and unplugging it. And then when I really needed it, when it was raining, um, there was a safety issue with having this um, 240 volt um, battery charger sitting out in the, in the rain. So the, the solution I, I came up with was this um, 12 volt solar um, pal solar panel powered version. Uh, like to think it's, it's also like a green solution. So basically I've got a, a 12 volt um, bilge pump, which slides down into this, um, uh, uh, into the pipe here. And um, it's connected to the hose that comes out at the top. Um, and basically there's a a box here with a battery and a, a, a timer in there. And 
I use that to uh, power the the pump to run it, and obviously the timer does the the timing operation. Um, you can also see there's a, a solar regulator uh, installed on the, on the pump here. Uh, basically installed it outside to because um, uh, it gets a bit hot, so it, you don't want to have that in inside the the, um, uh, the electronics enclosure. Um, so everything plugs into the into the box. The um, solar cell plugs into the other side of this box. Uh, the regulator and the the pump plug, um, uh, plug into different sockets on that that little box. Um, so the, the the solar cell and the enclosure uh, sort of fits over the top of this, so that you. Um, uh, it gives protection to the electronics, which was my main motivation. But my wife also liked the idea that she didn't have to look at my uh, electronics and, and boxes and things sitting out in the yard. So the design, I, I have to talk about the design. <laughs> um, there's not a lot to it, but um, the, there's a 12 volt uh, pump and um, running um, at full rated uh, pump. Uh, speed it draws about 2.2 amps. Um, it, it's a bilge pump for a boat, and um, it's designed so that it can run dry. So I, I don't uh, have any sort of uh, worry about the running that pump when it, it's um, there, there's nothing coming out. Um, currently, I, I run it for about half an hour every day. So at 2.2 amps you can do that maths fairly easily and um, it turns out to be about 1.1 amp hours of energy that I, I use every day. Um, I, I can change that time that I run it. Um, obviously if it's a bit wetter then I'll, I'll, I might increase that time but generally um, uh, yeah, half an hour is quite sufficient for what, for what I need. Um, I've got a, a nine and a half amp hour battery and so with a 50% discharge on that um, I can get four days operation uh, without having to recharge the, the battery. Um, four days of um, uh, wet weather in, in Townsville is probably <laughs> unlikely so I, um, um, uh, yeah, I, I haven't had issues with um, discharging the battery. Uh, if I do um, have the option, uh, any issues there, obviously I can still go back to the battery charger and plug it in and, and run it like that as a, as a backup. Uh, so the, the solar cell's got about a 2.5 amp output and so um, that gives me five hours to, to charge, sorry, uh, and if I say I've got five hours of sun per day, um, I can recharge uh, like up to 12.5 amp hours. So I, I could, in theory, fully recharge the, the, the battery in one sunny day. All right. Um, so some more, more pictures of, of the design. Um, this is uh, just the, the solar regulator on the, um, on the, the drain pipe. Uh, and the picture to the right is the um, electronics and the battery inside the, the box. Um, you can see the, the wiring's been done um, meticulously and, and laid out really well, all color coded, uh, not really. <laughs> um, my typical approach is, is um, just keep trying and, and using different colors until it works. Um, and it seems to work <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the, you can see the little timer in there it's sitting up in the corner of the box um, and a couple of the fuses. So the, the, the solar pump itself, um, the, the, the timer is, is just a, a 12 volt uh, timer that I got from, from JCAR. Um, uh, at the moment, um, as I said, I, I've set it up to operate for about uh, half an hour a day. I do that around uh, the middle of the day on the assumption that that's the time when I'll, I'll have most sun available and, and so that will um, uh, let me recharge the battery a, a, as quickly as I can. Um, but there's other cycles I can run at, um, at less days per week. Um, 
and obviously I can change the, the length of time. It, it is a little bit inconvenient to, to change the, the run time um, because I have to get into the, the box and, and adjust that. Um, it's a bit of effort to take the lid off and, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's not, not a big issue. Um, and so that's my schematic for the, the design. Uh, fairly simple, just got the, the battery at the top. There's a, a 10 amp um, fuse protecting, uh, um, protecting the battery, I guess, and, and the cables. Um, the, the timer sits straight across the, the 12 volt um, supply. Um, the motor is also connected across the 12 volt supply and there's a five amp fuse in that particular line protecting the, the motor um, um, from, yeah, um, as it said, it only draws 2.2 2 amps. So that, that's sort of um, well above what, if I get that much, it, it should blow, I'm hoping. And then the timer just times the, uh, brings in this contact here to, to run the, the motor. The solar cell um, is uh, fed, uh, charges the battery via the, the same circuit uh, and via this um, SolarX um, SR, SR8 uh, regulator. Um, this is, this is a, a very old, um, quite, uh, well, it's not a very sophisticated um, charger. Uh, all, all it does is monitors the uh, voltage across the battery. And when the, the battery voltage uh, gets um, to the state that it it's, um, determines as uh, dis or needing charge, then it connects this A minus and, and B minus terminals. And so the battery sorry, the solar cell charges straight into to the battery. Once it gets up to fully charged, then the, the solar regulator drops off the, um, uh, the, the solar cell. So it, it's just a, an on-off type control. Um, obviously you can get much more sophisticated um, uh, regulators nowadays that um, will match the optimum sort of um, output voltage of your, your solar array. Um, but for, for what I've got here, then it seems to work quite well. And that's it, actually. I, I don't have any more. I've, um, I don't know. If, I'm saying about quarter past on my, um, on my watch, and so I'm claiming that that's, that's pretty close to, to what we, we suggested should be the time um, length. I, I, I should say too, like um, th this, obviously this design was, was more um, tailored towards my particular problem of the, um, uh, the drama with my uh, dunny. Um, but um, obviously you, you could use very similar design for, for anything else with, you know, if you had a low area, which you know, maybe needed to um, uh, remove water from, um, then uh, yeah, you could use a, a similar sort of design for that. Um, obviously, it's not going to uh, pump a swimming pool full of water <laughs> in one day or anything. Um, so it's it's a fairly it's limited in, in how much you can pump. But um, if you if you're not in a, a large hurry and there's not a lot of water involved, then yeah. I'll, and I'll, I'll put all this information up on the IEEE uh, website. Um, so if you're interested in any um, of the design, uh, it's all there. And obviously, if you've got questions, uh, happy for you to, um, to contact me. Graham, thanks very much. That, that was a brilliant talk. I think it's perfectly marketed at the, the right audience and the right, um, the right content, right time. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I might start with the first question. Um, I actually think it's got so many applications across other areas across towns. Because as you know, as soon as it rains, you just see water backing up everywhere because of the clay soil. But I'm curious, did you get it going first go? Or um, was there a fair bit of back and forth to get, get before it actually started operating for you? Uh, it... It'd be nice to claim that it did run um, first off, but um, I did go through a couple of pumps actually before I got it got it right. 
Um, initially, I, I, I just tried um, hooking the solar cell uh, directly to the, to the motor um, and just um, basically had the, um, uh, I, I did that on the premise that I, I'd have a bit more voltage from the, the um, uh, solar cell and so that would give me a little bit more pumping capacity. But um, it turns out that uh, that higher voltage on the on the solar cell, uh, the, yeah, the pump doesn't like it. And after a, a few days of operation like that, I blew up my first pump. <laughs> so yeah, it, it wasn't um, totally um, seamless, but um, yeah, I, after that, I, it, it, it worked okay. Yeah. I think it's a brilliant story. <laughs> Does yeah, you know, yeah, so Graham, that's a very good presentation. So I just <laughs> wonder that, okay, like you, you did you uh, thought about adding any kind of sensors because I know you're using a timer now. Yep. So I think like if you're using like a, for example, like a rain sensor or something like that, you don't need to use that timer, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I was sort of thinking that um, uh, the other way that you can do it is, is you can buy um, a pump, um, a bilge pump, which has a float switch on it. And so what it does is if it's not um, uh, above the um, low level, then it, it won't, won't turn on or what, it's not above the pump. Um, and, and that'd be quite simple. And, and then you could actually have the timer sort of well, set for whatever you want. And then if it was above um, the, the bilge pump when the time was on, then it would, would do it automatically. And, and it would limit how long it would run too, so that you could sort of, uh, again, try and limit how much current you draw from your, your battery. Um, but I, I didn't do that in this case, because um, the, the bigger bilge pump with the, the float on it is, is just too big to fit down that pipe that I have in my backyard. So I couldn't, couldn't do that. But um, maybe if I looked around further, I could, I could find something else. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have a question. Yep. Yeah, g'day, Graham. Hey, James, how are you? Good, thanks. Just two well, two questions. First question is just um, not 100% um, sure on the application and, and whether you've got a strainer or have to deal with solids or anything in terms of blockages on the pump. That's the first one. Yep. Uh, and, and the second question, um, it, it looks it looks obviously based on the weathering, it looks quite robust and. And therefore, I'm just wondering how frequently you kind of monitor that and check on things like state of charge of the battery and whether it's all working. Um, I'm, I'm sure probably visual cues would be the first indicator in terms of your standing water or what, whatever the, the application is. But just wondering then um, further, had you considered, and if you do monitor it like quite a bit or whatever like that, you know, Bluetooth monitoring and things that you can, you know, monitor state of charge on batteries and stuff that might um, expand its, its system's capacity. Yeah, capabilities, I should say. Yeah, no, thanks, James. Like, yeah, no, the the first question um, about the the solids and that, um, and, and yeah, I, uh, no, it, it, um, the way the absorption system works um, in the septic is is um, the the real dirty stuff comes out the the, the septic tank end and um, it filters uh, through the pipe. Uh, and so what you, you get at the end is, is um, uh, I, I wouldn't say um, clear, um, um, and, and it does have a little bit of a, a smell to it, but certainly not um, too bad. <laughs> um, and not on the, maintenance issues on the pump at all or anything like that. So. No, and, the, and there's uh, no solids or anything at that end. Um, and, and there is a, a basic strainer on, on the bilge pump as well. Um, yeah, as for the monitoring, like, yeah, I, like I do switch it on during, um, you know, sort of 12, 30 in the day. And so, um, yeah, like that's, uh, uh, well, now I'm around every day at 12, 30, so I can, I can check that it, it's running. But um, yeah, uh, sort of, I do that every day uh, I'll run it every day too, so that that makes sure that, um, like, if um, I can check it on the weekend if, if I've gone to work all, all week. Um, um, but yeah, no, I haven't looked at, at anything more sophisticated to try and um, monitor the, the battery life or anything. Mm -hmm. 
like just the, the number of times that I've, I've taken it apart and um, um, sort of readjusted the timer or um, checked the battery voltage, it's always been fully charged. And I, I was wondering after the first couple of days whether the, the, the um, regulator was, was actually working because um, I wasn't quite sure that it was going, but uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, no, it, it's, it, it seems to be um, charging well now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Graham. I've just got a question about that, um, uh, the solar regulator there. Um, I mean, I can see how it works, but I'm just wondering if it's, if it's typical. It seems a bit weird to me that it does the connection on the, the negative end. I would have thought normally you'd have a negative rail and it would connect on the, the positive side, which I guess doesn't make a difference, but it just, is that normal? Or? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't have a lot of um, experience with uh, with them, um, but yeah, so I'm not really sure. But um, the, the particular regulator that I've got there was um, from uh, I shouldn't tell Mel Heron. It was an old project that I, I did at, at JCU about, in, I think in the early '90s, and and I, I managed to um, buy a bit of this stuff and. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, um, but yeah, I took that away with me, and and it's been sitting in um, my garage ever since. So um, yeah, uh, but I, I think you still can buy those sort of, of relays, um, um, but I, I'm not exactly sure. It, it, and yeah, and to me, it did look a little bit strange that it was. Uh, yeah, oh, hi, hi, Graham. So it's Ron. Yeah. Um, the they all have a field effect transistor. And it's always um, just the ones so that they have to switch in the negative side. Oh, okay. To oh. get that one there. So, you know, it's sort of, if it was, if it was normal, what's called low voltage, um, it's sort of illegal to switch in the, in the return path, but this is not, this is extra low voltage and yeah. nearly all the regulators just have that field effect transistor with a positive um, switch on. And so they need to put it into the negative leg. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, uh, it, it's the SR8, I think the 8 stands for 8 amps and, and I, I did once try and run it with um, more solar cells and it was had about 10 amps going through it and it got very, very hot and so I was uh, concerned that it, it um, what had actually failed after that, um, but no, it, it still works fine. Um, but yeah, that, that was why I mounted it outside the, the the box as well to try and uh, reduce heat inside there. And uh, a, a second uh, non-technical question, uh, where do you pump all the water to? <laughs> uh, I've got very healthy plants down the back of my yard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, just on that with a pumping, oh sorry Graham, yeah, with no, a I pumping to it. I, I worked in a, in a guest house in Tasmania for six months and we had a commercial sewage system there where it was normal to pump the water out, but, but it was registered with the council as a $1,500 a year maintenance charge. And there was also a oxygen levels and air pumps in there to, um, before you were allowed to sort of pump the water out into the gardens and things. Yeah. So it was pretty highly regulated on commercial premises in terms of, of, of that, yeah, with its oxygen working and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I I would imagine that I'm, I'm not, um, it's not uh, exactly uh, like if there was complaints or something that, I, that, that the council may uh, sort of have a word with me, but uh, I put it down, like if I, if I didn't do this, then um, around that, that end pipe at the end of that absorption trench, it, it's just like a, um, a, like a soggy mess and, and it smells all the time. Um, whereas at least if I, if I do this and pump a, a little bit out on the, out to the yard, um, then yeah, it's, it's given it, it, I don't get that big soggy mess, which I reckon is more of a uh, danger than a little bit of, um, yeah, sort of gray water that I, I release from this. Yeah. Certainly have good growing plants in the backyard, but and it's some nice green spots there. It's an interesting point about the aeration. Do you have a like a sprinkler tap on the end or anything to it might be good for it to aerate a bit as it comes out? 
Yeah, I, I've got a little, it's only a small sort of, um, I don't know, cricket ball size um, uh, sprinkler, um, which spreads it out over maybe, I don't know, 30 centimetres or so. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's not, um, yeah, there's, there's yeah, it, I don't spread it too far for, for that reason. Like I don't want it going over the neighbor's fence or something like that. Um, but um, yeah, it, I, I don't don't generally just have it run straight out the end of the hose again. Um, try and sort of throw it a little bit around. Um, provides a bit better coverage that way too, rather than just yeah, sort of having it all flow out in one one point. I think the commercial ones have a um, an air bubbling system, so it's pumping air bubbling through a holding tank right at the end before it goes out, and so that keeps it oxygenated. I think in that sense. Yeah, I, where, where I live, the, um, uh, obviously on an acre block, and, and um, we built the house here at the end of 1999, uh, or finished in 1999, and um, we were the, the last house in um, Townsville that was allowed to have a, a, a sewer system, um, a, a septic system, sorry, and, um, um, and have our... Uh, grey water run straight out of our baths and showers and that sort of thing through pipes onto the yard. Um, so our, our neighbours that built sort of a year later uh, had to install the, the fully underground um, system, which, you know, uh, much more elaborate with, uh, absorption trenches and, and treatments and, and that sort of thing for, for everything. Um, so, yeah, but there's a lot of issues with that sort of system too, with just, yeah, it, it, you know, maintenance and, and that becomes a, a big issue then. So um, we've had very little sort of, um, apart from these sort of issues with the, our septic system um, and the grey water is good, good waters the, the trees and grass a bit more. So yep, don't feel so guilty about using water in, in uh, the dry season. I think on, um, has anyone got, else got any questions? Yeah, Robert here. Yeah. I've, I've got just a, a quick one. Um, that there's obviously not overly expensive components in it um, and, and knowing the battery is not overly um, or costly as, as a single component, but have you thought about uh, putting in uh, like a dis, um, discharge controller um, just to prevent that the battery gets completely trained just in case there is a malfunction or something? But obviously it, it adds a little bit of, um, extra space requirement and a little bit of an extra cost to it, but it would help to prevent the battery from completely deep discharging and potentially <clears throat> losing capacity or even getting destroyed. Yeah. No, I, um, well, I, I didn't do it mainly for that reason that yeah, it was just an extra cost in there and, and um, didn't have too much room left in the, um, in the box anymore. Um, but uh, like, um, I, I found that it, it, because, you know, 90% of the time in um, Townsville, we're, we're getting w well above that um, sort of um, five hours of sunshine a, a day. And, and um, I think my, my battery is sort of uh, topped up really, really well. And um, that, uh, I, I don't, I'm not really going to see too many um, um, uh, times when I, I um, uh, sort of discharge it too low. Um, I guess time will tell. Like I've, I've only had this for a couple of years now, so um, if I start seeing batteries go early, then I, I might look at doing something more there. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it'll be an issue for this one too much. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Thanks for sharing. No. Yeah, Grandpa, on behalf of everyone, thanks very much for a, a really good presentation with that's really down to earth and it can apply for our everyday lives, I think. And it's so it's such a um a classic engineering approach as well, where it didn't work perfectly the first time, modified it a bit and it does the job. So well done and thanks again. No worries. Thanks all for coming along and having a listen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much, everyone, for dialing in. And we hope to hold these every couple of weeks. So if you've got any ideas of an invention that you've done or you know someone who's done, <laughs> please email them through and I'll book you in.